Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and I recently asked my patrons a very important question. Option 1 or Option 2? And much to my immediate discomfort and probably your future discomfort, they almost unanimously voted on Option 2. Now the first step in making a scorpion man is making my scorpion man's body which starts as a big lump of aluminium wrapped in four extra long lengths of armature wire. Then I can bend each of the legs into position and snip off the excess. And at this point I've got a shiny scorpion skeleton ready for some clay. I'll slap a thin layer over the entirety of the aluminium opus thoma then bulk out the cephalothorax until it's nice and chunky. It of course needs to be extra chunky since my backward scorpion is gonna need a little anatomical rearranging, so his head will be his gut, which means his abdomen is his chest. Also, I thought it'd be kind of funny if he was facing upwards and instead of the standard chitinous armor plates along his back, he had like a whole bunch of saggy man boobs. I don't know, this one, this one went off the rails real fast. Otherwise, once I've got my saggy chesticles suffering from the effects of gravity, I can pop some nips in place and add the ever-important bumpy nipple texture. Then I can add a belly button that perhaps raises even more questions we don't want answered and poke some divots into the bottom of the belly for future pincers. At this point, I've now got eight pecs to match my eight legs, which means this is still totally scientifically accurate. I'll then flip this handsome fellow over and add a long sausage down his back to create his spine. A little poking and prodding with a variety of tools will turn this sausage into a spinal column and it's time to start slapping some clay onto those legs. I'll start by wrapping each of the armature appendages in a thin layer of clay and blending and smoothing away the seams and joints. Then I can begin adding the knuckles between the segments of the legs to differentiate each of the moving parts. As I was moving along adding wrinkles to the knuckles, I started to see each of these legs less as legs and more as individual fingers, so it won't be far to travel to end up with fingers for toes. Before I do that though, I want to smooth out the lumpy bits, which I'll do with my old friend, a mason jar full of alcohol. The alcohol will soften the topmost layer of clay and help to melt away the most egregious of my fingerprints and blending lines as well as add a little texture as the brush cuts into the soft clay. Otherwise, once I've got my legs looking both smooth and textured, I can start to turn all my legs into fingers by adding unsettlingly shaped fingernails and knuckles to the bottoms of each leg. And with each of my finger feet finished, I can finally move on to making my scorpion's pincers. To make my pincers, I'll roll a little lump of clay into a long lump of clay and cut it in half. This will ensure both my pincers are the same size, and to get the correct shape for my pincer, I'll pinch and bend the pincer so it has a traditional pincer knee with a little lumpy foot at the bottom. Of course, that means I need to carve some toes into the tip of the foot and shape the sole so it's nice and fat. Now, a pincer, by definition, is made up of two pieces that pinch together to hold things, so I need to add another foot to the other side of the leg so my scorpion has the means to grab things. Now, I'm not entirely sure how the musculature would work for a double-footed leg, so I just added lots of wrinkles and folds and made the legs big, fat baby legs to hide any of the underlying muscle. After all, if you can't see it, you can't tell if it's wrong. Finally, once I've added my toenails to both feet, I can repeat this process for the other pincer, then press them into their predestined reverse lumps on the underside of the belly. To really hammer home that fat baby leg aesthetic, I'll add lots of extra wrinkles along the leg and belly. And I also gave them great big butt cheeks, cause I'm a child and I think butts are funny. Finally, some final smoothing of the surface and wrinkling of the folds will finish his bottom half off. However, I don't want to leave this scorpion feeling immodest, so I made him a pair of tidy whities to cover his shame. And with that, my scorpion's bottom half is actually finished, which means it's time to think about how I'm going to make his head. I'll start with a nice long length of armature wire that will bend nicely around the body to create the immediately recognizable head on a long neck that everyone pictures when they think of a scorpion. To make the head, I'll start by straightening my wire and attaching some foil to the tip. which then gets wrapped in a little lump of clay. This little lump of clay will be the top of my head, so I need to attach the bottom jaw to create an appropriately scorpion-y looking silhouette. Next, I'll press some big eyeballs into the front of the face, as well as add a couple couple lateral side eyes. 
To the best of my knowledge, scorpions don't have eyelids, and I want this to be anatomically accurate, so instead of eyelids, I'm going to wrap some little wormy dealies around the outside of the eyes to create a slightly tighter eye socket. Poking with my round clay shaper, we'll press the clay back from the eyes, creating a lovely little shape, not unlike a mouth holding a ping pong ball. Speaking of mouths, I'll make my scorpion's mouth by jamming a ball stylus into the space below his eyes and rolling it back and forth until I've got enough space to stick some little balls to each of the sides. These get smoothed in to create the extra big cheeks that are necessary to fit his arms. Now you may be wondering, why has he got arms coming out of his mouth? Well, scientific accuracy, my friends. You see, scorpions have something called chalicerae, which are essentially little appendages that stick out of the front of their mouths, which they use to help pick popcorn kernels out of their oddly human-shaped teeth. So once I've got my human-shaped teeth in between my two tiny, fully-fingered arms, I can fit a big goopy tongue in place, and that's my face finished and ready to be attached to the body. I'll drill a little hole into the next stump and stick the tip of my wire into the body so I can bend the wire down into its final spinal spot. I'll then wrap the wire in a thick sausage of clay to create my extra long, extra strong scorpion neck. After a little blending and smoothing to blend and smooth the neck and the chest, I can start to refine the shape adding some shoulder blades and necular definition. An extra long wormy dealy wrapped from his shoulders to the back of his head will add a little more muscular definition and a little me apple added just behind the jawline will finish this scorpion man off. Except I realize now that I forgot to add his ears, so I'll slap a couple of those bad boys to the side of his head before a final bake. And with that, this scorpion boy is now a scorpion man. All he needs now is a little color. I'll start with a nice white primer before moving on to the airbrush. I'll start by giving the entire body a pale fleshy base coat to set the initial shading followed by some lighter highlights on the larger surfaces. I also realize that the majority of my sculptures are painted in pretty much the exact same skin tone as me which begs the question, am I just making me over and over and over again? And if so, why hasn't BetterHelp reached out to me for a sponsorship? After all, if this channel isn't a cry for help, then I don't know what is. Once the base coating is done, I'll spray the body with a matte varnish which will help to protect the finish and make this heavy red wash I'm applying a little easier to sponge off. I only really want to tint the base coat beneath, adding a bit of red to the otherwise too pale flesh tone. So by applying it over the varnish and dabbing away with the sponge, I can get a nice solid tint. I'll then follow up the wash with a couple mistings of isopropyl alcohol which will help to break up the red surface creating some pretty natural looking subsurface veins. I'll then use the airbrush on a really low air pressure setting to spit some more red over the surface to create some extra texture. Finally I'll mix up a thin yellow wash to layer over top of the red to tone it down a bit and bring back a bit of the warmth. Then it's just a case of going back and forth with the reds, yellows, and fleshy base tones, spitting it through my airbrush to create some pretty terrific looking blotchy fleshy texturing. With the skin tones looking eerily similar to my own, I can start to add the details. I'll give the fingernails and toenails and teeth a white base coat as well as paint my tidy whities white. I'll then work my way back through the nails and teeth adding some umber wash to really gnarl them up, as well as add some questionable yellow staining to his otherwise two white tidy whities. I'll give his tongue a red wash so it stands out against its fleshy surroundings, then carry that red wash up into the edges of the eyeballs before painting them pitch black. I'll then give the nips a watered down terracotta top coat to help them stand out and a dirty brown wash between all the various folds and wrinkles for some final recess shading. I'll then mix up a very, very thin blue wash that I can apply with a very sharp brush to create some very thin, barely visible blue veins scattered around the body. To add a bit of contrast, and because I think it's funny, I'll give my scorpion man plenty of chest hair and a gross hairy treasure trail encircling his belly button and heading toward his unsightly, slightly stained tidy whities Then using another sharp brush, I'll cut lots of little brown lines across his arms, legs, feet, and hands to create some fine hairs before finally moving on to gooping up his eyeballs with a layer of UV resin. Last but not least, I'll string some Fabri-Tac between his fingers and his tongue so it looks like he's fresh off picking popcorn kernels out of his teeth. This stuff is nice and goopy and creates excellent saliva strings and it's pretty easy to manipulate with a toothpick. Otherwise, once the saliva is in place, I'd say we're all done here and on to the glamour shots.
As always, a big old thank you to my lovely patrons of Patreon and a special hey how are you to my newest patrons, Gisa, Bob Sim, Victoria Garcia, Caitlin Forster, John Graves, Bree McFarlane, Ethan and Gabby Ryder, your local 420 dealer, Andela of Time, Fiber Goblin, Daniel, Geos, Ryan Casley, and Lil Schmeep. You are the octuplet of long, slender fingers that hold this many-boobed body of a channel up. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say after this one, so we'll, uh, see you next time. Cheers.